Friends, a couple of months ago, deep in the heart of Texas, you and I drove the brand spanking new Porsche Cayman S. One in a lovely shade of lava orange, I may add. But now we're back in the much more temperate climate of the California Republic. So let's try a different derivation of this flat four-cylinder turbocharged 982 platform. Maybe one with a little less horsepower and a folding roof. Now you may or may not have been with me in the Lone Star State, hook em horns, uh, when I drove the sister, brother, whatever you want to call it of this, the Cayman, basically this with a tin top. Uh, that one was the fancy model, that was the S. And that one was fitted with a two and a half liter flat four cylinder engine with a single turbocharger. This one, if there is such a thing in the Porsche world, this is a uh, down market. Uh, and if I could peel back the carpet, uh, you would see that there is a different engine, so you kind of have to trust me here. It is a two liter flat four cylinder engine with a single turbocharger. Now there are a significant amount of small differences. Basically Porsche had flown over an engineer from Germany and I feel bad for the man. Basically I picked him up from the airport and just shook him for information and that turned into not one uh, but two tech reviews. One on the Cayman and one on the Boxster which we shot in Texas. And that's where I go over things like integrated dry sump lubrication systems and variable cam lift and all that kind of basically the differences more than just the bore and the stroke that differentiate these two cars but it really all net net goes down to output differences horsepower goes down to 300 horsepower and the torque which is more important to you and i is 280 pound feet which comes in at a very low 1950 rpm stays flat all the way up to 4500 rpm now that is highly unusual for a flat four cylinder engine so i say we take this and we go out and drive it okay so before we dive too far off into this let's just step back for a minute 1996 this car came out and it was something like 175 horsepower that was like fire breathing for the day. I had a 97 Z3 convertible with a 2.8 engine and that had like a fire breathing something like 190 horsepower and that was the upgraded model. So here we are with 300 horsepower and that's more than like the base S when it first came out. So with it, let's get around these turns here and see if we can put our foot into this thing. Um, people, this is quick. I mean, this is the basic car and it's quick. And this is not even the sport mode. Like there's a button here that's marked sport or auf Deutsch, sport. And basically what it does is it changes the whole uh, engine mapping, all the engine management to make it like, if you read the manual, it's very funny. It, it changes it into a more active lifestyle. That's literally what the, uh, the owner's manual says. Yes, I am that dork that when the cars do turn up on my doorstep, I pull the owner's manuals out of them and I read them through. Maybe not cover to cover, but like the highlights and I find odd like uh, Deutschlich. Is that what it would be called? Deutschlich or Germanish. German and English. That's basically what's in there. Uh, anyway, now let's go into this sport mode. Right, but you know what? Let's try something different. Let's slow down. Okay, so we're in second gear. Ready for this? Now let's punch it going up the hill and see what we got. Okay, slight delay there. But, oh my God, people, this is a quick car. Do not want to go in there. Don't do that. If I hadn't had driven the S before this, yeah, Cayman, this is... I mean, check, it's a quick car. Done, let's move on to the next topic. Now I know it's been an incredibly long time since you and I have played a round of the options game, but we do need to spend some time unpacking what someone did to spec out this car, this very guards red 718 Boxster, otherwise known as the 982 that's sitting here in front of us, really in back of me, in front of you. Uh, someone did something here that I haven't seen before in the Porsche world. Now, did you really think Porsche was gonna send me a car without a lot of options? No, this one has about a Prius C worth of options on it. But you would look at it and it doesn't look like it has many options. But as it pertains to our discussion here, 
They all relate to driving dynamics. Uh, so this one, as we've already covered, is a manual transmission, which means it's the lightest uh, weight of all the Boxsters, and it is not an S, which means it's also lighter weight than the S. So that means it's 40 pounds less than an S manual, so that means 2,944 pounds, which is great, right? Uh, well, you look at it again, and you're like, wait a minute, the wheels, those are not fitted as standard, you would be correct. These are the 19-inch wheels uh, that would come from an S, which means the rear track is wider by about eight millimeters. Not a huge difference. Uh, then we gotta throw in some other bits here in that this one is fitted uh, with PASM, which means adjustable dampers. So now we have to put all of that together, the weight, some of the options, the fact that it actually doesn't have a lot of options, and then with my favorite manual transmission, and how does that all translate to driving dynamics out on the roads of the California Republic? If you've been following the show for a while, you may recognize where we're at. Uh, it is our top secret road, and we mainly use it for special projects, and there's three reasons for that. Uh, number one, there is not a stretch of this road that is straight. Uh, number two, it is all downhill, particularly challenging for driving dynamics. And number three, it's one way. Uh, so with that, I've taken the liberty of switching off the sport on all of the engine mapping stuff and the sport on the damper. So we're in the most basic mode. Uh, so with that, uh, let's get into gear here. Um. <laughs> Okay, that's just my natural reaction to a convertible Porsche, but let's get back to it. Now, we are in the most basic mode here, which is the softest mode. So we've got a nice couple of declining radius turns coming up here. Let's put our foot into it, exiting the turn. And I'd love to sit here and say, oh, yeah, there's a little squat back there and maybe a dive in the front. But even on its most basic mode in the most basic Porsche Boxster, it's softer is the best way to put it. There, there's, just, there's virtually no squat, dive, or lean, or any of that. So before we get into this thing here, let's go into sport mode on the dampers, come around the face here, and the view is just stunning. I love the California canyons. Really, the purpose of this exercise, the reason why I wanted to take you here, other than it being beautiful, is the car we drove in Texas had a stiff roof. This car doesn't. And I am literally getting around these turns. Please don't try this at home. And I can't sit here and honestly tell you there is an appreciable amount of flex in the car, thus the cha a change in the driving dynamics. Again, we're on the sport mode, but oh my God, people. It's amazing how a, an open top car that is not my beloved Elise can do this. And remember, this is what? 800 pounds heavier than my beloved Elise, and I'm still able to push it this hard around turns like this. And again, look at the view. Oh my God. Okay, now we're gonna get into much tighter turns as we get to the bottom here. And what's amazing is, okay, we've talked about the flat neutral handling, but let's play around with the brakes. These are the, the metallic brakes. No one's gonna really put a $10,000 brake package on a Boxster that's not an S. Who knows, maybe someone would, but I've gone through this road, let's just say a couple of times, and I haven't experienced much fade. But now as we get to the bottom of the hill, I call this the swallows, because we're getting into the bits that get us back out to PCH here. This is like um, when Bruce Wayne, as Batman, used to take his visitors to the Batcave, would get back out to the highway to go to Gotham. He would hit them with a bat spray. This is what I do with my, my dates hit him with a bat spray on this road. But notice, I'm at the bottom, I've just, I don't want to say smoke the brakes, but I've used the brakes, and there's virtually no fade. That combined with incredibly neutral handling on a car that has been set up moderate. So this isn't the most, like, the top in terms of driving dynamics. And now, a little bit behind the scenes. So when we travel to the manufacturers to drive the new wares, much like we did with Porsche in Texas, there's usually not a lot of time for socializing. So it wasn't until we put away that lava orange Cayman S and that white Boxster that turned into the tech review for this, that we really had an opportunity to sit down and get to know that engineer that Porsche had flown over from Germany. 
And it wasn't until then that I realized I was speaking to someone incredibly special. See, we started to get into some of the German and, and switch back to the English and then get into some more beers. And I got into really what this guy does. And it turns out eight years ago, this was the guy that Porsche charged with designing the architecture for an entirely new engine family that would replace the traditional flat six in the 991 and this. So this guy, eight years ago, that is four years before we drove the then new 991 that had the older engine family in it, that he was coming up with, okay, well, how do we design, engineer, and manufacture a flat six with turbochargers on it? And then how do we adapt that engine family to four cylinders in the smaller Boxster and Cayman? And I don't want to give it all away, but you and I both know there's going to be a GTS and there's going to be a GT4, but how do you get more power out of those cars if you already have a four cylinder and a turbocharger. Well, obviously you can fool with the boost pressure and you could change some of the mapping on the engine, but there's more to it. And I don't want to give it away, but let's just say that when this gentleman comes back to the US or more likely when I go to Germany, we're going to get him back in the show and I will let him tell you the story himself because you know what? Let's just leave it at a hell of a cliffhanger. Okay, so let's take it down a couple of notches as we make our way through Malibu Lake here and talk about the interior. Now, I have not been shy in telling you guys that I am a huge fan of the ergonomic design of a Porsche interior, and that is because I am not a fan of those integrated controllers. So this is the latest derivation of the Porsche Boxster and the Cayman. Uh, the 982, and they haven't made really any appreciable changes, which is good. And here's why. Everything is where it needs to be. Even non-essential controls like set it and forget it, PASM and sport setting. I am firmly against this whole haptic feedback school of thought and feel it is incredibly unsafe. So what Porsche has done here is you have a knob for the volume, people. You have a knob to adjust tuning as well as navigation controls. And also you've got temperature and fan controls here. What I find odd though is like, let's put the air conditioning on. They took out the numbers. Why would you take out the numbers? Like numbers are just fine. I know what 65, oh look, an old Porsche is passing us right now. We like that one a lot. Talk about tactile feel the dashboard on that thing was amazing. Anyway, why take out the numbers? Like I know what 65 degrees or like 15 degrees Celsius is. I'd rather see that here or here than have like a barcode. That's just very confusing. But enough about bar graphs versus numbers. Uh, let's unpack this specific Boxster 718, the way it's been specced. Now, I, I have all the respect in the world for Guards Red. I mean, after all, it's like the official flag of Porsche. But I don't think I would spec out my Boxster in Guards Red because I don't like the black interior. And actually, the black interior works really well with the Guards Red. And, and the problem with the black interior, it just it hides all the stunning details of this. Like, look at the stitching here or the silver accents. You don't get any of that. And then even this steering wheel here, this is, uh, this is the sport steering wheel. So it's a smaller diameter, which I have to say does make a difference in driving dynamics. I know you're going to laugh at me, but it does. And last, but certainly not least, my favorite option box that has been checked on this specific Boxster. The seat belts. Now be honest with me, who doesn't vote for all cars having some sort of color in their seat belts? So in summary, what do we got? Well, yes, less power. 50 less horsepower and much more painful, uh, 29 less pound feet of torque. And uh, yes, I could go on some platitude of horsepower does not equal driving dynamics, but Here's the reality of it. Even with less power and torque, this is every bit as magical to drive. Actually, forget about magical. It's not magical. It's every bit as engaging to drive as the more powerful Cayman that we drove in Texas. Yes, do I want more power? Of course I do. But this is more of a testament 
to Porsche engineers doing what they continue to do best than it is, oh my god, this is an entry-level Boxster. Now, all is not perfect in Camelot. I know I left you in Texas with, I don't know how I feel about the sound of the car. Well, now I know how I feel about the sound of the car. Uh, I just, I don't like it. And this one even fitted with the sport exhaust and Porsche was kind enough to give me one with red seat belts to make me feel better because they know I like red seat belts. But I just don't like the sound of this engine. Does it take away from the amazing tool that this is? Absolutely not. It's still a, a much more engaging car than the car it replaces. It would just push me more to the Cayman to isolate myself from the sound. Now, with that, I want to turn this around to you guys, and I want to leave you guys with a very specific question. We have now driven a Cayman S and a base Boxster. We will probably at some point get a Boxster S on the show and a base Cayman with a manual transmission so we can like do the whole gamut of things here and obviously whatever derivations come down the line. But I want to leave you now with this question. You have seen two tech reviews and two full first drive reviews on very similar cars, just different technology as well as more output. So my question is very simple. Which version would you choose? And this is a very specific question. You can't say you're going to get a TTS or a TTRS or a Corvette. The question is between Boxster or Boxster S, Cayman or Cayman S. So I'm looking more for the difference of 2 liter to 2.5 and 300 to 350 than I am hardtop or convertible. So don't just tell me which one you would choose. Tell me why you would choose it. And most importantly, tell me what you currently drive. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All in Word, Moto Man TV All in Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. With that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, make sure you download our fancy new mobile application, which you can download for free at Apple iTunes and Google Play. And oh, by the way, we are live on five, count them, five international airlines. You probably can hear a lot of airplanes around here because they are lining up for LAX and Van Nuys. And number two, I want to leave you with a fun fact. This probably does not look like a practical card, now does it? Well, I have proven you otherwise. Uh, you may follow me on Instagram. If you don't, you should. I turned up at LAX and I left this car at LAX and I was able to shove a very large suitcase in this seat here, as well as all my camera gear in the frunk and the trunk and made it just as practical as any minivan you drive with your wife. So nah, 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 nah. Until I see you next time, fish beta.